breath and rest for a while We're gonna get there Try to let yourself hold like a child Everybody. In case you've never seen our channel before, I'm Cliff. I'm Mandy. And we went RV full time in June of 2021. Um, our mantra is that this is not a trial run. Find that thing that you want to do and do it. For us, it's this. Part of jumping into RV life full time was uh, unrolling our kids from school, which was a huge milestone to making this real for us we want to make sure that we're doing the right things by the kids that's part of this jump part of this change and we've actually got a lot of questions from friends not only because of the move that we're making into rv full-time but we're right in the middle of a pandemic that's been going on for the better part of a year and a half and uh, there's a lot of political turmoil that we're not going to get into but there's because of that turmoil and the pandemic there's a lot of confusion as to what people should be doing with their kids. So we think that there's probably some crossover that we might be able to provide some guidance to those that might be interested in homeschooling or finding an online curriculum if they choose to keep their kids out of public school. Or they might be going to RV full time like us, in which case it's also super relevant. So that's what we want to share with you all. Um, like she said, it is a huge milestone. It made it very real for us when we pulled the kids out of school. You have a series of milestones, buying the truck, buying the rig. People do that without going RV full time. But when you sell the house and you pull your kids out of school, that's that's a big deal. Makes it real. Yeah. And we had a great plan when we pulled the kids out of school. We did. <laughs> we, had a, we had a great plan. Uh, Part of the plan was to allow for our kids to go to public school through Texas, which was paid for by the state, just like any other public school, but done remotely. This was going to allow us to move around <clears throat> as digital nomads and do the things that we wanted to do with that flexibility. House Bill 1468 did not make it through legislation in Texas, and the school that we had enrolled in died right there on the floor, and we had to start over from scratch with fewer options to boot. Uh, there were articles all over the place, families scrambling that weren't even RV full-time, trying to figure out what they're going to do with their kids with a little recourse. After the past year, was it a year and a half? They were remote, year and a half, they were remote. We were confident that we could make this happen. Not sure how we were gonna make it happen yet, if it was gonna be through a virtual learning or if it was just gonna be full-blown, we're gonna do this homeschool just ourself homeschool right. so we knew that they could do it just it was finding the right the right program so in 2020 spring break started kids came home pandemic went into full force they never went back to school um, they spent their summer isolated as most kids did for the most part uh, all sporting events were canceled etc then they went back to school but not back to school they were remote we were fortunate enough to get to some so we got some support we had Miss Karen and Miss Casey that supported both the kids throughout the school year as Mandy and I did our full-time jobs both from home. Working, doing the grind, doing the rat race. It uh, goes back to our first video story about us just constantly being enveloped in the laptop, punching the keys day in and day out. However, the kids did great. They got good grades. They passed their, their grades. They went to the next level. They really didn't have any major complaints. But... Kids don't know what they don't know. They don't actually know what they're missing out on. And we as parents had to ask ourselves what behaviors or patterns are being created by them going to school at home, living at home, their social life is at home, and them never leaving. Also, you know, what are they missing? What are they not getting? I think there's going to be a lot to be learned well into the future after this pandemic. So we, we, we decided that it would be time to take control and that is part of this journey is that we want to make sure that we are 
breaking free from whatever patterns there might be negatively from the pandemic, being in one place isolated all the time, and to get out there and to do it differently. And that's really the motivation. Uh, but again, the, the help that we had with Miss Casey and Miss Karen and the school teachers that were at their respective district, putting in the work, trying to make it work, kudos to them. Um, we just don't know if that's the best way. We weren't feeling like that was the best course for them, especially with V having ADHD, having anxiety. Our daughter is super young and still developing. So there's a lot of things that we were concerned about. I spent hours and hours on end doing research to find the right school for our children. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's say it this way. Mandy's in the, bit, Mandy's in the middle of getting her company sold. Um, she's, as an officer of the company, she has a lot of responsibility. So I did take on a lot of the responsibility of looking for the right school. Matter of fact, I just graduated from Penn State and that freed up a lot of time. So initially I was like, I'm going to do it myself. I feel very confident that I'm going to be able to provide them the right curriculum, provide them the right level of attention. And then I thought about it a little bit more and I'm definitely not an educator. I'm not a specialist. Uh, so, and I, I want to, I want to be considerate to what a specialist would be able to provide. So we thought about it a little bit more and research, a lot of research went in and I learned a ton. We learned a ton about what is actually out there. I have to say that there's going to be a natural level of anxiety, apprehension, concern for anybody wanting to move from the public school system or a private in-person um, school to homeschool or an online academy. Good news. There's lots of upside, lots of pro tips, lots of families that have done this. Part of the community, you can also be rest assured that the homeschool community has athletics, they have proms, they have field trips. So if you're in your respective state and you're not a nomad, you're just homeschooling from your location, there's an entire community of people out there that you can connect with, just like you're going to a brick and mortar location. Um, you can do that anytime. And it's there's a lot of them. As of like 2019, there are over two and a half million homeschool students. And I promise you since the pandemic and everything that's going on, it's boomed considerably since then. So our community has grown pretty significantly um, since the pandemic started. And they cover the range of, I'm going to go to homeschool and I'm going to manage the curriculum entirely on my own, to I have two years left in high school and I plan on going into the military, or I plan on going to a university or even an Ivy League school. That is a possibility. That's actually part of this message is you need to know what you want to do later, how it translates later to your respective institution. We wanted to future-proof what we were doing. Our kids are young, eight and 13. V has five years to go until it graduates, probably a decade. What do we, we can't anticipate exactly what's gonna be happening in the next five to eight years. So we wanted to build in some level of flex. So what we decided to do um, may not be the same as what you need to do. A couple of things to share with you. Number one, every state has a little bit different twist on what the legal homeschool boundaries are. So we've provided a website here uh, down in the comments and you can check it out. It provides a by-state uh, list of things that you need to do to make sure that you're legal. For us in the state of Texas, the legal requirements they're pretty loose. They're pretty relaxed. There are some, um, but for the most part, you're in control of your, your child's future. They give you that level of control. To me, that was what I struggled with, was what, not knowing what, what the requirements were and then finding out what the requirements were and not being able to wrap my head around how loose the requirements were. Like, what you can get away with not providing your kids. Yeah. There's a lot. I mean, step number one for the state of Texas to begin homeschooling, unenroll them from public school, which at that point, they don't have a school. It's, it's kind of uneasy, but the first place that we enrolled them to required as a public school, all of their academic records, their immunizations, even though they weren't going anywhere, it was a one for one type of transition, just like they were going to a public school. The new institution that they're going to doesn't require that nearly as much. Um, 
but they do require the information to understand who they're interacting with. You started installing those apps and getting that, that outline program for doing it yourself. Yeah, so there's through who? Study.com, Khan Academy. There's a bunch of free ones. There's K-12 um, that actually points you to other homeschool type of academies in your area. There's a lot. Um, it's a huge market, actually, believe it or not. And they're not all free. Some are considered private academies if you're looking for accreditation. You don't need to do accreditation, which is another thing to understand. It could be totally free. For us, part of the regulations in Texas is it needs to be a bona fide curriculum, meaning that it's something tangible that you can say that, yes, this is the process, this is what they're going through, and you have to have certain subjects in place. You have to have language arts, you have to have math, you have to, depending on your grade, you have to have science, you have to have citizenship, which is pretty cool. But not every state is the same. Not every curriculum is the same. Not all curriculums are free, and not all uh, curriculums are accredited. You have to ask yourself, number one, what state am I in? What are the regulations that I have to follow? Two, where do I want my child to end up? Where are they going? What do they want to be when they grow up? And that is going to influence your decision heavily. For us, because we do have an eight and a 13 year old, after all of the research that we did, we decided to go with an academy, Calvert Academy. Um, we're so new in this, this is neither a recommendation for them uh, nor a review because we're just learning that ourselves. Based on our research, this is the best one. It is accredited. So if we want to put the kids back in public school one day, the education translates well into that school, wherever that is, nationally. The reality is the curriculum is only part of the story. As we're moving through each city, we're going to do add-ons to their curriculum where they're learning history and geography. and They're going to immerse themselves in the history of the area that they're in. They're going to be eating the food, talking to the people, they're going to be supplementing their curriculum with hands-on, in the moment, in location, which is going to create this depth of knowledge that I don't believe that they would otherwise get out of a textbook. As many examples as you can provide in the classroom, remotely or as in person, is the handful of field trips that you get, which are great for supplementing the knowledge, you are on a field trip all the time. So when you are studying a certain part of history from the curriculum, say Gettysburg, we can be in Gettysburg. If you want to understand about the forts in Florida, the Civil War, the Civil Rights Movement, the Revolutionary War, the War of 1812, none of those were at all, and you want to study geography, and you want to study sedimentary layers, you can go see these things and be hands-on, which creates a different level of understanding of the concept. And that's what we're going to be doing all the time. One of my favorite architects is Frank Lloyd Wright. And I have books and books and books of art and architecture and drawings and pictures of the houses and Googled the houses, looked at them on maps, aerial views. But actually going and driving up to a house and seeing it, it sticks with you way more. So we were able to show that to our, our kids and give them some of the history on Frank Lloyd Wright and not just read about him, but show them the actual buildings and the houses and the history. Yeah, the 1902 to 1905 Martin House in the middle of this really beautiful neighborhood in Buffalo, it still stands out. It's absolutely huge and it's super smart. If you know nothing about architecture, which I don't, you will pull up onto this structure and you're still like impressed. Wow, how beautiful it is. And then actually the kids pick up on that, and they become intrigued and interested, and they ask questions. And V did a lot of reading on the five different structures here in Buffalo that Frank Lloyd Wright either designed or put up himself, uh, everything ranging from the Martin House to this uh, gas station that he designed in the 1920s that wasn't built or finished until 2014. But our 13-year-old knows about this guy now, and he knows about uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, which is super cool. Meeting new people. I think it's important for the kids to meet people from different areas. Polly's really done a great job meeting new people, and she's, I think she's even more confident now, talking about what we're doing, talking about our story. She met somebody yesterday, and she unloaded on them, let them know 
everything that we're doing. We're super proud that she's able to articulate and tell people what we're doing and why we're doing it. Yeah, she showed up here at the rig. She said, I made some friends down by the pool. They're from Texas. And she was actually speaking with adults because she was playing with one of the kids, but found out they're from our neck of the woods. Uh, they have been full-time since February. We ended up sitting out on the patio here with them until late last night, well after quiet hours. Sorry about that. And we made some new friends on the road, but that was triggered because of our daughter's, our eight-year-old social skills developing, where she's, she knows that she can interact with certain types of people and have a conversation, what the commonality is. She's eight. That's what we want. That's what we're going for, which is awesome. Super proud. Yeah, super proud, Holly Joe. Mm -hmm. That's what we have. We've made a decision on school. There were some curveballs, legislation, public school, pandemics. Find out what, where you want your student to be, where they're currently at, what the regulations are by your state, and do it. You can I, change. You can change back. You can change. If you need to. And we will do this uh, program with... Calvert Academy. Calvert Academy that we just signed the papers on two days ago. Yeah. And we will give a follow-up on that and let you know how it's going. And if it's great, great. If it's not, we'll do something different. Yeah. No worries. The education of the kids will most likely be a series of things uh, since it will be ongoing versus selling the house, which is a one-time deal. So we'll let you know exactly what's going on with Calvert, how the kids are developing. It's a super important part of all of this. Um, it's not just a milestone. It's in progress. So our kids are developing. They will be. And we'll keep you posted. So like we mentioned at the start, find the thing that you want to do and go do it. This is not a trial run. Why wait? Don't wait. Do what you want to do now. Yesterday, you said tomorrow. Yesterday, you said tomorrow. Until next time, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please let us know. This was the, the largest or the most asked question that we've been getting from all of our parent friends about what we're doing. I think people want that, that guidance and confidence. Just like you, we're trying to figure it out. We want the very best thing for our kids and we're making moves towards it. If it doesn't work out, the plan's not working for us, we'll change the plan. Make a jump, do what you wanna do. Don't wait. Till next time. That it? You can't wake up. 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 You can't wake up